Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the Stay Healthy at Home webinar series. We are so happy you could be here with us today. I see some folks filtering in now, so I'm just going to give everybody a couple seconds to get settled before we begin. Okay, again, we're so grateful you're here for the Stay Healthy at Home webinar series. Every Tuesday at two o'clock, we present on a new topic related to self-advocacy or programming for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So today's topic is all about getting back on transit, staying healthy and mobile in 2021. Our session today will be led by a uh, program staff from the NJ TIP, New Jersey Travel Independence Program. Before we get to our introductions, I just wanted to um, let everyone know that this program is coordinated by the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project, which is a division funded program of the Arc of New Jersey. We provide supports to the state's largest network of individual self-advocates and self-advocacy groups, otherwise known as the New Jersey Statewide Self-Advocacy Network. And we have a ton of resources and information available on our website. So I do invite you to check that out. And also you will find our weekly planner infographic. This is a super great resource for keeping up to date on all of the offerings that the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project has going on. So it's broken down by each day of the week. And these are clickable links. You can find this on our website as well as our Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter account. Also, this is a live link. You can click here to join our email list. That is kind of a one-stop shop. If you sign up here, all of the information reflected on the weekly planner infographic will come straight to your inbox. And again, this programming is free and open to any person with intellectual and developmental disability, caregivers, family members, as well as professional staff. I also want to highlight the training request portal on the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project homepage. This is, again, free and available to any program or school supporting people with intellectual and developmental disabilities statewide. So if you click this link right here, it'll bring you to the training request form that you fill out. Once we receive your requested training topics, we will get back in touch to schedule dates. Again, everything is available on our YouTube channel, Instagram account, Facebook page, and Twitter account, as well as the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project homepage. So just a little bit about using GoToWebinar. Uh, if you have questions, comments, or feedback, that is welcome. We would love to hear from you throughout the webinar, and a dedicated time for questions and answers will be spent at the end of our time together. Uh, but if you do have questions throughout the webinar, use the questions box on your control panel. It looks like this. You click on that little triangle, and then you'll be able to type your question or comment here. And don't worry, if we don't address the question during the webinar, we will dedicate time at the end. So before we get to a video about the program being highlighted today, I do want to introduce our two guest speakers, Melody Bundy and Lewis Hoffman. Melody is a program manager with experience in travel training and 10 years of experience in education. Most of Ms. Bundy's work includes training individuals to use public transportation to become independent travelers. She has experience as a trainer with community organizations and high school transition students, and her professional strengths focus on program curriculum development and implementation. Melody received her Master of Public Administration degree in nonprofit management from Capella University and a bachelor's degree in economics from Seton Hall University. Currently, Melody serves on the board of directors of the Association for Travel Instruction, which is the industry's, na industry's national leading organization of travel training. Lewis Hoffman serves as a program manager and has been a travel instructor with NJ Tips since 2008. He specializes in group travel instruction programs for older adults and people with disabilities, as well as connect to transit workshops 
which are trainings for professionals. Mr. Hoffman is a graduate of the School of Social Work at Rutgers University with a concentration in nonprofit, nonprofit and public management, as well as an area of emphasis in aging. Lewis has created customized local guides using public transit for Union County, Bergen County, Caldwell, Verona, West Orange, South Orange, Montclair, and Elizabeth. So without any further ado, I would like to play a video all about NJ Tip to get us started. Hi, I'm Karen Alexander, the Managing Director of NJ Tip at Rutgers, the New Jersey Travel Independence Program. NJ Tip at Rutgers teaches people with disabilities and older adults how to use public transportation. Our mission is to increase the self-sufficiency of people by empowering them to use public transportation safely and independently. I am so delighted, I'm happy. The, the, the lady at Tip at, at Rutgers, she's the one that gives me this boldness to ask for her training. I'm not shy anymore. I request it immediately and they give it to me. Participants will learn among others how to read schedules, plan their trips, pay their fares, taught by seasoned professionals in a one-on-one -on -one environment or small groups. During the one-on-one -on -one training, the instructor will ride along with the participant, guiding them until they are confident to travel independently. The small groups participate in class activities and escorted transit trips to popular local destinations, such as the mall, museums, and downtown centers. Currently, NJ Tip is offering remote individual training and virtual group field trips. In-person training can be provided on buses and trains for essential trips. NJ Tip trainers follow CDC guidelines along with Rutgers University and NJ Transit policies to reduce the risk of exposure to the COVID-19 virus. New Jersey Transit, the NJ TIP program, changed the lives of many seniors here in Westwood. But for me personally, it made such a huge difference. I'm a big chicken. I don't like to travel anywhere by myself. And I had gone on the NJ trip training with seniors from Westwood. And the next day, um, for the first time, I traveled by train to go to Hoboken to babysit for my grandson. Uh, it made all the difference in the world. I knew what I was, was supposed to be doing because of the NJ TIP. Program. So thank you. Upon completion, participants feel empowered to travel on public transit safely and independently. Well, the training has taught me how to be more confident. It gives me um, the spirit, you know, to want to go out and do things more. And I don't have to. I don't have to depend on someone to pick me up and come back and get me. in. But seniors like to be independent and travel and go as they choose. For more information, contact NJ Tip at Rutgers. Oh. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over to our guest presenters, Melody Bundy and Lewis Hoffman from NJ Tip. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Ashley uh, for setting up and for asking uh, NJ Tip to be able to participate um, in this webinar uh, today about getting back on transit um, and staying healthy and mobile in 2021. Um, I'm here, um, Melody Bundy uh, with Lewis Hoffman and thank you for uh, such wonderful uh, introductions of us. So the mission of NJ Tip is to increase the independence and self-sufficiency of people with disabilities and older adults by empowering them to use public transportation safely and independently. Uh, and over, we've trained over 13,682 people have been trained by NJ Tip so far. And that's our record as of April of 2021. Uh, next, I'll tell you a little bit about the history of NJ Tip. Uh, so, NJ Tip's timeline. NJ Tip started 
in 2005 to 2007 as a pilot program um, because NJ Transit wanted to know if you teach uh, people with disabilities how to use public transportation, would they be able to? And we found out that they were able to. We had um, 100% uh, graduation rate of the pilot program that were able to use uh, public transportation from travel training. And then in 2007, NJ Tip Inc. was incorporated uh, in our offices in Livingston, New Jersey. Uh, then we started to work um, and get uh, funding, uh, school and federal grant funding um, from 2010 to 2011. And then in 2013, NJ Tip at Rutgers Forum, NJ Tip uh, went to Rutgers. Um, our offices are located in New Brunswick, but we're still out in the field uh, working. Uh, with travel training um, as needed. And then in 2018, we developed a partnership with DDRS, uh, where we were uh, able to train individuals that um, are looking for employment or for starting work. Uh, so to be able to have that connection of sometimes when you have a job, that one piece that might be missing is transportation or how to use transportation. So that's how NJ Tip and DDRS formed a partnership. And then in 2020, surprise, surprise, we started uh, virtual uh, travel training. Um, and we've been doing uh, virtual travel training uh, right now for small groups, individuals, um, as well as professionals as needed. So we're um, available. And now in 2021, we're starting to do more of a hybrid of some online virtual training, as well as some in person as needed. Um, and what does NJ Tip at Rutgers offer? We offer one on one instruction, uh, small group instruction and seminars for professionals, which are connected transit uh, training. So our one-on-one -on -one is really like uh, the first uh, form of travel training that we've always been doing. Uh, so what are travel training benefits you wonder? You can improve your quality of life because if you think about it, just having the opportunity to just go outside and take the bus whenever you feel like it versus having uh, to wait for a family member to give you a ride. They might have work. They might be tired from work. So you have so much um, more increased access to things. Now you can just go out on your own. You feel more empowered and independent. Uh, you have more options. You don't have to just go when someone's available. You could go when you need to go or when you have to go. Um, you don't have to have your chauffeur could retire so they don't have to drive you around, as well as the cost saving um, that you can also get from participating in travel training. Uh, and our one-on-one -on -one, uh, travel instruction, we've had 468 one-on-one -on -one graduates through April the 30th of 2021. And the key steps for travel training is an introduction where we make sure um, people understand what NJ Tip is and what travel training means and making sure that they're understanding then that they're interested in being an independent traveler and traveling safely. Then we conduct an intake, and during the intake, that's when we meet the family uh, or any caseworkers that are working with the individual as well as the individual. And we figure out um, what's their history of using public transportation or getting around in their community. Uh, following that, the travel instructor pre-travels the route without the customer to do a route check to make sure if there, make sure it's accessible, if there's any accommodations that need to be made and just prepare uh, for the trip as needed. Then we do onboard training. Um, and then after we have onboard training, we follow up uh, with the travel instructor starts to fade back to make sure that the client really understands how uh, to independently travel, as well as we do have retraining um, available um, as if it's approved. Um, to teach people how to get to maybe a new destination or if they relocate within New Jersey, how to get 
um, from their new uh, location. So we're available for that as well. And we have 30 different independent travel skills uh, that we use to make sure that someone is um, an independent traveler. And some examples are if they're able to interact with strangers, uh, if they're comfortable boarding and signaling and exiting, uh, do they have appropriate social skills? Uh, they're safe street crossing because you got to cross the street sometimes to get to the bus stop or to get off of the bus or the train and making sure we're safe with that, as well as uh, understanding how to handle the fare and how to handle their fare safely. Uh, next, uh, Lewis will um, explain to you about the reduced fare program. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's great to, to speak with everyone today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the NJ Transit Reduced Fare Program. And this is a really important thing uh, for people with disabilities to know about because it can get you about half of the regular fare uh, on a New Jersey Transit bus, train, or light rail. Um, and you might see on here where it says type of card, it says Act Link with PCA. That's because this person actually applied for Access Link and they were sent this reduced fare card in the mail. And this is to use on the regular bus, the train, or the light rail. It's not to use on Access Link, but you get it because you applied for Access Link. So it's just an important thing to know. It also says Act Link with PCA. What's a PCA? That's a personal care attendant. That's someone who's helping you, uh, either helping you on your trip or helping you at your destination. And they can travel with you for free. If a friend come with you just for fun, that's not someone who can come with you for free. But if you have someone who's helping you to do your trip or at your destination, they can travel with you for free if you have this PCA on your card. Okay, so this is, there's an application that's actually attached to this webinar, and it'll be a link on the website as well. Um, so that, that uh, application is something that you can fill out, and then you have your doctor verify your disability, and then you will uh, apply for a reduced fare card. Okay. All right, and this is a, a picture of the front of the application. Who can apply for this? It's uh, people with disabilities, older adults, the seniors, uh, age 62 and older, and uh, people who are in the military. Okay, now we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the mobility options in New Jersey. I already said that you can use the reduced fare card on these uh, mobility options. You can use them on the local bus, you can use them on a bus that goes in and out of New York, uh, and you can use them on the train, or the or we call it train and rail, um, where we can uh, use it on the light rail. Um, and that's really important. Um, certainly getting a lower cost for all of these is great, but the bus and the train and the light rail, they're already a lot cheaper than taking an Uber or a Lyft. An Uber or a Lyft is almost 10 times as much as most uh, regular trips. I calculate it all the time when I'm uh, deciding whether I'm going to pay $1.60 to do this trip or whether I'm going to pay, you know, $15 or $16 for, for uh, an Uber or a Lyft trip. So it's it's uh, a really great thing to be able to have reduced fare and to be able to use all these different mobility options. Next slide, Melody. Thank you. So this is an example of a New Jersey Transit bus. This is one of the local buses. You'll see this is the 94U. So most uh, buses in the northern part of the state have two number, you know, a, a two-digit number associated with them. And in other parts of the state, there's a three-digit number um, for that particular bus. They all have a place that the bus is going to. And sometimes the bus goes on a different route. So it might be the 94U or the 94B or something else like that that will define exactly which route this bus is going on, the 94L. Um, so that's something to know about. This is a picture of a bus lift on uh, an NJ Transit bus. And this actually comes out of part of a step uh, on the bus and brings you up into the bus without having to actually walk up any steps. And that's a great feature to use if you really can't uh, walk up those steps or if you're in a mobility device. Um, there's also another feature uh, called the kneeling feature. And I actually just used it about an hour ago. Um, uh, helping one of my clients get onto the bus. Uh, we asked for them to kneel the bus and it comes down and makes that first step a lot easier. 
Okay. Now Melody's gonna do a poll. Let's see what the poll is. All right, and so our first poll is, when you're standing at the bus stop, uh, what do you do? Uh, one, applaud, two, read arm out, or three, look the other way. And you can just click it. Um, I said it if just in case if you don't uh, see the poll, you can hear what the questions were and you could type it in the um, question box. Okay. So it looks like we have some votes in and it looks like it's about 50 50 or so. Um, about half of the people think you look the other way and the other half think uh, that you reach your arm out. And the correct answer is you hail the bus and you can reach your arm out uh, so that you can hail the bus or wave or hail the bus when it's approaching to let the bus, oper know, bus operator know that you want the bus to stop. So you can see these Legos, they're reaching their arms out uh, to let the bus operator know that they want uh, that next bus. Okay, uh, Lewis, you could go on about paying the fare. Wonderful. Um, so these are some of the ways that you can pay the fare. We have uh, an individual bus ticket, and you can get those for either the reduced fare or regular fare. Um, and you can also pay with an, a bus pass. This is an example of an interstate bus pass. It's uh, for the local bus, two zones, and this was from June 2011. That's, uh, you know, a, a while ago, but the bus passes still look just like that. Um, and you can also pay and get a bus pass or bus tickets on the NJ Transit app. Now you'll see a picture of the fare box there. In the silver part, that's where the coins go in, and you can just kind of drop them all in to that coin slot. Um, and it, in the area where there's like a green flat area, that's where you put in the dollar bill. And you can see a person's hand putting a dollar bill in that spot. If you're using anything bigger than a dollar bill, you just have to make sure to tell the bus driver that you're paying with a bigger bill. Now, on some of the, the buses that go in and out of New York, they might actually give you change. That's called a full service bus where they can give you change. But on the local buses, there's going to be a fare box like this. Okay. And this is an example of paying with the NJ Transit app um, on a bus in Morris County, because Morris County buses actually have these scanners where you can scan your ticket. And that means that you've used the ticket once you scan it. Um, and the train conductors have a portable version of this where they scan your ticket. And um, it just means you can't use it again. Okay. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the train. Okay, NJ Transit Rail, about half of the NJ Transit stations are accessible. What does that mean, accessible? If you've only ever taken the train on maybe the Northeast Corridor in like New Brunswick or Elizabeth or Newark, you might have only been to accessible stations where you walk right across onto uh, the train without going up any steps. Some stations actually have steps, like uh, the Fanwood Station um, actually only has steps to get up and a lot of the stations in Bergen County have steps to get up into the train. So those stations are not going to be marked with this symbol of accessibility and the stations that are accessible will have that symbol of accessibility right next to them on the train station map. If they have a symbol of accessibility, they'll have an elevator that goes up into the train station, uh, they might have a ramp, they might have a, a something called a mini high level platform which is like a ramp and a high level platform on just one one part of the platform um, and they'll have this feature called a bridge plate if you look at the gentleman in the picture um, who's in the wheelchair he is riding across the bridge plate which bridges the gap between the platform and the train and uh, the conductor gets that bridge plate and puts it uh, between the platform and the door so that's a, a, a very good accessible feature you can use and we'll talk a little bit about light rail um, there are three light rail systems in New Jersey. We have the Hudson Bergen light rail, which is totally accessible. Uh, the Newark light rail, where most of the stations are accessible, that's an older system. So some of the stations don't have to be upgraded to be completely accessible. Um, and the river line, which is also 100% accessible. These are kind of like the modern version of a trolley. 
um, or a streetcar. So if you've seen a movie where they have one of those, this is like that. One of the important things to know when you're riding the light rail is that for this service, you have to validate your ticket. And there are also, um, when you're using the NJ Transit app, you're gonna have to activate a ticket. So it's very similar. You just have to make sure in this case that you timestamp your ticket and with the app that you activate your ticket when right when the vehicle comes and you're about to get on. Okay. Melody's gonna do a poll. Okay, we have another poll um, that is coming up shortly. And this poll question are all are all rail stations in New Jersey accessible? Yes or no? Okay, it looks like some uh, votes are coming in. Just want to make sure you all are still woke and listening to us. Um, and it looks like um, about 67% people said uh, no, which is the correct answer. Yes. Um, all of New Jersey uh, rail stations are not accessible. Good job. Seems like everyone is paying attention. Good job. Right. Next, we'll go over um, some other mobility options that are available in New Jersey uh, from the subway uh, that you might see, like in Hudson County area, the PATH, or in South Jersey, the Petco uh, or Petco. Um, then there is a shuttles. Um, some of the power transits or some of the counties they have a shuttles that people use to get around. Uh, there's ferries that go um, the New York ferry line, as well as there is taxis, Ubers, and Lyfts. Um, and then there's uh, these other services called Go Go Grandparent and Ride for Life that we'll tell you a little bit more about. So Access Link is the ADA complimentary paratransit service um, that NJ Transit provides. It uh, is you see the number there. You can call them. Uh, to request uh, sign up for to uh, be found, see if you're found eligible for Access Link. Uh, you can um, you, now they have it where you could book your Access Link rides uh, just on the app. So it's more functionality, and Access Link is always um, improving other service. So you can always go to njtransit.accesslink.com to see more information or new updates. Then the another uh, mobility option is the county power transit in New Jersey. So there's 21 systems because it's one in each uh, county. Uh, the service is for people with disabilities, older adults, and other um, transportation disadvantaged people. Um, the county power transit, you cannot use the reduced fare card, that NJ Transit reduced fare card. You can't use it on Access Link. That is only for... Um, the NJ Transit vehicle. So the power transit is mostly on a donation system. Uh, so that's why um, you're able, you just make a donation. So just to answer that question that came in the chat um, about using reduced fare, uh, you just would uh, set up the power transit and you just make a donation for their service instead. Okay. So the three W's of COVID-19 is to wear a mask, uh, watch your distance and wash your hands. So uh, sometimes you might not have the opportunity to wash your hands. So you just want to make sure that you um, are having hand sanitizer with you or be able to get close uh, someplace to wash your hands um, when uh, available. And, you know, things are always changing and just make sure you're being current of what's going on in the news if things are changing. And so this is NJ Transit tip during a uh, pandemic. They want you to wait safe. So make sure you're always keeping your distance from other people. You wanna move safely. So always you wanna stay to the right. Uh, you wanna mask uh, safely. So make sure you're wearing your face uh, mask that's covering your nose and your mouth and your chin. Uh, trash safe, uh, put everything um, in the proper disposal, and then hand safe, make sure you're washing your hands, avoiding hand-to-hand -hand, uh, contact.
Okay, um, and so a new addition that uh, NJ Transit has made is uh, their My Bus uh, feature, their new My Bus feature that Lewis will tell us a little bit more about. Yeah, so this um, uh, feature actually tells you how full your bus is uh, before you get on it. So if you um, use the New Jersey Transit app and you type in your stop ID, which is located on the bus stop sign, uh, where you're going to board the bus, you type in your stop ID, it will tell you the next bus is coming to that stop, um, how how long it is till they arrive, but also it will tell you if it's got light ridership, medium ridership, or heavy ridership, meaning if the bus is really full, it's going to be red and have a bunch of people. Uh, if it's just kind of full, like maybe it's half full, it'll be yellow. And if it's really not full at all, like maybe five people or less, it's going to be uh, green and say light. So it's really uh, an important feature because I can kind of plan in advance uh, if I'm going to take a trip at a certain time of the day. I can look at it the day before and see, you know, how full the bus is at a certain time of the day. Or I can look at it right before I'm about to get on the bus and decide if I want to get on that bus or maybe I want to wait for the next one because it's really full. Um, so it's a very nice feature. Um, when we're communicating with transit staff, we really wanna advocate with our actions. We wanna make sure we're polite. When we're asking for the bus to be knelt, you say, please kneel the bus, instead of, I need you to put down the bus. You wanna say, please kneel the bus, right? Um, and you wanna be specific. You wanna say, please lower the lift instead of being uh, saying like lift or expecting that they just put it down for you. You have to ask to make sure you get what you need, okay? And you wanna be firm. If somebody is, say, is not really moving quickly or you don't think you're gonna make that, you say, please get the bridge plate now so I can board this train, all right? These are ways that we can advocate for ourselves, but we definitely wanna think about how we're saying things and how we're phrasing them so people understand and so that we can get what we need. Okay. Uh, Melody, would you like to talk about Axride? Okay, yes. Uh, so the NJ Transit uh, Vax Ride is, um, the Vax Ride is provided by, it's the program that NJ Transit has developed in conjunction with partnership with NJ Tip. We have assisted them with um, locating uh, the different transit options or uh, transit access that's available that might not uh, be on NJ Transit. So sometimes your different county providers or um, other providers not on the NJ Transit uh, system so that you can know. Um, now there's ways that you could get free rides to the vaccines. Uh, the way you could get a free ride to the vaccine, you could just uh, put in a uh, one way uh, to a vaccine location, to one way to a vaccine location uh, that you'll be taking public transportation. And then you put in the code VAX ride, and then you can get um, a ride on transit uh, for free uh, using uh, that code. Uh, so the VAX ride system is a, a, sim a system that you can just uh, put in the address, uh, the location of the vaccine location, and once you put in the address, it'll let you know, it'll give you back a result and let you know how far or how close the next um, the transit is from that location. So then you can figure out how you can take uh, public transportation uh, to get to the Vax Ride uh, location right um, from there. So we said- We actually have a video on YouTube that'll show you how to um, get the free Vax Ride and how to use this. Um, and then, uh, so during this time, we are offering virtual field trips. So we wanted to be able to highlight some of a, a virtual field trip that we've done um, and that we're able to offer to different um, individuals or groups as needed. So this is a virtual trip to Point Pleasant um, Beach. Uh, so we have a poll before we go to the beach, make sure you got to do some work before. So um, can you all think of any other mobility options 
uh, other than the ones that we've mentioned that you might use. We have a few listed. Um, if you think of some other ones, you can put them in the question. Uh, so we said uh, NJ Transit, Access Link, Taxi, uh, Car, Van, Bus Operated uh, by County, Municipality, uh, Power Transit, Bicycle or Walking. So does uh, anyone use any of these other kinds other than just the NJ Transit fixed route system? Can we, it looks like we have some votes coming in. Okay. All right, great. So it looks like we have um, about 70% or so use car, van, or bus that are operated by county or municipality. Um, and then about uh, 20 or so people bicycle. They bicycle or walk to get around. So it's, it's good to get an idea. We like to get an idea of who's in the audience and what different modes of transit uh, they use. So back to our virtual trip to uh, Point Pleasant Beach. So most of the time um, when we take uh, travel instructors, we take uh, public transportation. So we will highlight uh, with you how you can use uh, the North Jersey Coast line to get to um, Point Pleasant Beach. So if you look on the SIP map, the second from the bottom is Point Pleasant Beach um, as a destination. And that would be where we would take the train from. You could start from all the way up at the top at North Penn Station, New York, Elizabeth. Some people transfer from um, Bergen County and then transfer in Newark or transfer in Secaucus Junction to get to the North Jersey coastline. So you can use um, different, you could come from different places in New Jersey to get uh, to Point Pleasant Beach by train. Okay, so then we need to make sure we find our nearby bus stop. Uh, so the bus stop could be either on the left or the right. We just need to make sure that we know which direction we're going in the right direction. We don't want to be going up towards uh, New York and we're trying to come down towards Point Pleasant. So we want to make sure that we're, if we have to take a bus first, that we're looking at the right um, bus stop and going on the right direction on the bus. Uh, so for our example, we're taking the 815 towards New Brunswick, and then from New Brunswick, we would transfer to the train to go to uh, Point Pleasant Beach. So this is uh, the New Brunswick Rail Station, and we have a safely crossing the street and walking up to the platform uh, to take our train. We would make sure that we check our departure vision so that we're making sure that we're on the right track. Um, our train is still running, it's no delays. Um, and if there's any other stops and making sure, so we'll see it's a 938 Long Branch, uh, that SEC means Sea Caucus, track number two, uh, the North Jersey coast, and it's boarding now. So if we were trying to take that train, we'll be hustling to track two. Um, then uh, we also highlight uh, where we do in our training, a full training, uh, where we show you how to ride the train virtually. And this is good to help for even when we do in person, just to have a chance to watch a video before so you can know what to expect when you're using um, the train in person. So we like to show this short video of how to ride the train. Um, and then here is a full picture of the whole uh, NJ Transit rail map for the whole state of New Jersey. So you can see how I was mentioning before all those different connections. So you could go all the way down to Atlantic City, which is the blue line, or you could be on the yellow line or the red line. So it's different lines or different train lines. Uh, that you could take throughout New Jersey. And most of them either they have a transfer and see caucus, New York or Newark that you can connect in, uh, to the different train lines as needed. Okay, then here is Point Pleasant Beach Station where we finally got to our fun destination. Um, uh, hopefully you all, it's hot outside today. So maybe you feel like you're at the beach or wanna hop into the pool 
or hop into the uh, ocean, hop into the, yeah, the ocean, uh, since we're here at the beach. Then we'll, uh, we have walking directions. So Point Pleasant uh, Beach Station is over here. Then we would just have to walk uh, all the way over to get to the boardwalk or to get to uh, the aquarium where sometimes people find that to be fun. And we try to like uh, highlight those. And one thing that, you know, I used to have a babysitter whenever we would go down the shore, she always say, oh, just bring me some saltwater taffy back. So that's one thing our Jersey Shores are known for is our saltwater taffy. So sometimes we show a video about the, the local uh, popular staples in a certain area. Then we have videos or an aerial view of the boardwalk. Uh, so you can feel like you're at the amusement park virtually. Um, and then we also have highlights of the aquarium where you can see some of the uh, penguins or the different animals that are available uh, there to see. Uh, they have a uh, little exciting birds also that you can see could be fun. And then now Lewis is going to go over what happens if we miss our bus. All right, so what do we do if we miss our bus or train? It's really important to have a backup plan. Um, I had a client the other day who he was at the bus stop, he was doing the normal thing and the bus went right by him because there was a new driver on the route. Sometimes things like that happen and my client didn't do anything wrong and the driver didn't notice him um, and he blew right by him. It's an unfortunate thing that happens. So we've always planned his trip to not be the last possible bus that could get him to work. So he waited for the next one and he was probably two minutes early for work instead of the normal like 20 minutes that he is early for work. Um, and so it's good to have that kind of black backup plan set up if you can. And also to make sure if buses get canceled. I had a client who um, early in the pandemic, uh, there were a lot of drivers who were calling out sick and um, you know, the, the bus that he took at 8.30 got canceled, so he had to wait till nine. It was something that we learned, uh, you know, was just one of those things that happens sometimes when, uh, when a lot of people are calling out sick. Um, and then also for weather issues, if it's a really rainy day, I see ominous clouds in the sky right now. Uh, this is not a time you'd necessarily want to be walking home from the train station if it's just about to thunder and lightning. So if that happens, that's when you would call an Uber or have that Lyft, you know, credit um, in your phone or, uh, you know, get a, a gift card. That's a great thing to ask for as a gift. Um, so you have that $30 or whatever on your phone to pay for that when you really need it. Because, you know, there are times when you just need a ride. And there are other times when taking the bus is going to be 10 times cheaper than taking that. So it's it's a good thing to have the backup plan, but not necessarily use it every day. And you wanna also pay attention to New Jersey Transit's website. Uh, that, that's fine, you can go to the next slide. Pay attention to New Jersey Transit's website right on the front page. There's gonna be alerts um, that tell you if there's an alert on that particular train line or even on the bus route. If you, if you can see the screen, it has a listing for every different train line. And at that time, when we took this screenshot, there was an alert for everything. Probably was like, you have to wear masks or something like that, you know, COVID protocols. Um, but if you click on it, it'll tell you if there's a specific alert, more, more specific than just a general alert for the whole system. Um, so the other thing you can do on New Jersey Transit's website is you can use these trip planning tools. And you'll definitely wanna plan your trip if you're if you're looking at going on a trip to the beach, you wanna see what are my options for going there. Maybe I wanna leave at 8.30, but the train comes at 8.45. So I make sure that I'm gonna be there in time for that particular, um, the, the bus or the train that I'm taking. And it's good to get there early. Our, our um, senior travel instructor, Larry, always taught us to say, it's better to go get there 15 minutes early than 15 seconds late because you will always see that bus flying by if you're there 15 seconds late. Um, and I, I've actually had that experience a couple of times and I always have Larry in my head telling me, you know, 15 minutes early. Um, and that's a good thing we, we instill in our clients too. 
make sure to get there early. Um, so you can do this on the NJ Transit website. You can plan your trip using the trip planner. You could text my bus and then have that number that's on the bus stop sign in your phone. Then you can text it again tomorrow before you leave your house. So you know if the bus is running late or you even know how full the bus is. And you can do that for the train too. There's lots of tools you can use to do that with the train. Google Maps is another great way to plan your trips. And that might even work for some of the shuttles and some of the other services that New Jersey Transit doesn't run, uh, like Coach USA buses or other, other buses you might take. So it's important to have Google Maps and know how to use that too. You can also see how much Uber or Lyft is if you, if you wanna estimate how much it is right now uh, in order to uh, have that backup plan. And then another great app that we use a lot is called Transit App. And Transit App doesn't just work in New Jersey, it works all over the country. So Transit App is gonna be a great tool. The best part about it is you don't have to type in anything. You just open up that app, it senses where you are with the GPS, and then it actually will just give you a list of all the buses that are close by, what stop they're at, and all the trains and other kinds of transit that are close by. It even tells you how far away an Uber or a Lyft is because an Uber could be three minutes away in certain places or it could be 15 or 20 minutes away. And that might change your decision on whether you're gonna ask for an Uber or a Lyft or just wait for the next bus. All right, zooming in on the website a little bit, we see those alerts. And when we took this screenshot, everything was running on time except the North Jersey coastline, which is what we need to get down the shore. I wonder what the alert is. Um, so that system status screen is great. You can also click on the menu up top and you might click on Jersey Shore to see some of the details about how, uh, how you can get to the shore and maybe even pay for your beach badge with your train ticket. They actually have some deals uh, if you go to the ticket vending machine or one of the um, ticket offices or even the NJ Transit app, it'll show you what deals they have either for the Jersey Shore, uh, to go to the Meadowlands, to go to Monmouth Park Racetrack, to go to even restaurants. Sometimes they have deals uh, in, in different uh, towns that have a train station. So it's really great to look at this list of places you might have deals to get to, like Six Flags even. Uh, I know they have a bus that goes there and you can buy your ticket for Six Flags with your uh, bus ticket. So lots of different possibilities. Now, if we're planning our trip, we want to type in the trip planner. Let's say we're going from New Brunswick. Um, we would type in New Brunswick and it will auto complete with that uh, because it's a train station. If you want to go to a more specific, if you want to start from a more specific place, you type in the full address. Um, but if you know the station is where you want to start from, just type in the station. It works well with the trip planner. And then we type in Point Pleasant and that's going to be our, our destination. Um, so it's important to know those words, origin, where you're beginning uh, your trip from, and destination, where you're going to. And then you want to make sure you're departing at or arriving by a particular date um, and a particular time, and that you'll start, uh, you'll, you'll do your trip at that time. So if you wanted to leave at 8 a.m., you'd need to change this from 10 a.m. to 8 a.m., and if you wanted to go on a different date, um, you might change the date, okay? Now, we can also download the Transit app. This is the icon for transit. And like I said, this works all across the country. So it's not just something that you can use in New Jersey. It's something that if you go into New York, if you go into um, Philadelphia, or even if you go to California or Arizona, you're gonna be able to use this. Even, uh, I was in Pennsylvania the other day and uh, the local transit system okay. there had this app. So it's it's a great thing to be able to use because you just open it up and it tells you what's close by um, and, and if things are running right now. So it's a really quick way to get a snapshot of what's available near you. And you might wanna know more about these transportation network companies, Uber and Lyft, and you might wonder what's Via? I've never heard of that. Via is a different kind of service than Uber and Lyft, um, but it actually works in New York City and Jersey City, and there's a few other towns that are doing pilots with Via. But it's essentially like a mini, uh, a mini bus or a van that goes along a specific route and picks up people who have this app 
and the town subsidizes it like a lot of towns subsidize bus service anyway so you're paying like a dollar fifty or two dollars or something like that to ride via and they're gonna take you most of the way but they might they might drop you off at the corner instead of driving you up right to the front of some place um, and it'll tell you exactly where to meet the bus on the app so it's a pretty innovative idea and something that you know I would certainly advocate for in my community because it's inexpensive easy to use and uh, a little more convenient for some people that might not live right on a bus route um, uber and lyft are going to be more these ride sharing services where you pay the full price of uh, getting somewhere uh, you're going to use that in an app so um, usually I start in Google Maps I put in my origin and destination and then it estimates how much is uber how much is Lyft and how much are the different levels so for example there was surge pricing this morning and I had to order um, a, a, uh, a lift okay and there was surge pricing which means the price went up because it was 9 a.m it was rush hour and a lot of people probably were on their ubers and lifts right then so the the actual cost of a regular uber and lyft went up to be more than getting a luxury car it was like 25 dollars for uber and lyft and it was only 20 for a luxury car so it was a a, a better deal to actually use the, the what's normally more expensive um, and that's confusing, but this is the way these, these systems work. They work on surge pricing. So if there's a lot of demand, the price goes up. If there's not a lot of people riding, the price is normal. And um, you know, if there, it also is if there's not a lot of drivers in an area, that might uh, happen too. Um, okay, so anything else to say about Uber and Lyft, Mel? No, I think that's it. Oh, um, uh, something Lewis had found out is that if you sit on the other side and open the window, uh, that's something else to be aware of. Like during this time, you want to make sure that you open a window if you can, and uh, you want to open a window so that you can have that cross uh, wind and stuff like that when you are in an Uber or Lyft. You don't want to sit right behind the driver. Yeah, I usually sit opposite the driver for a bunch of reasons for safety reasons too um and you usually would get in that that seat and if you open up the windows that are um opposite you the driver opens up the window opposite them and you open the window opposite you the wind won't blow right in your face but it will blow through the car uh and not right in your face um so it was especially like when it's cold out that would be um an important thing to do but also now just for airflow in the car it's a really good method more about nj tip this is the nj tip at Rutgers team um me and lewis that you've all met uh, this afternoon um and then we also have uh, larry lindstrom karen alexander and jeffrey that make up our nj tip at Rutgers team um, and we're spread out uh, throughout New Jersey uh, to be able to provide uh, in-person uh, travel training as well as virtual uh, travel training. Um, we are providing infield travel training for essential trips. So that means that it's uh, something that comes on a recurrent significant life activity like maybe a medical trip, job, school, um, maybe a new internship, um, and then sometimes there might be a time sensitive component. So maybe your school is starting, your job is starting, your internship is starting, your doctor's appointment is soon. So those are um, the essential trips that we are uh, travel training uh, for during this time. Our virtual travel training, we're able to offer it on various uh, platforms from Zoom, uh, Google, Google Meet, uh, WebEx, uh, we've done FaceTime, uh, you know, we're flexible of uh, figuring out what platform the customer has or that we might suggest the customer get um, or the group get so that we can offer um, our virtual uh, travel training, as I mentioned before, uh, as a one on one basis or a group or as a group of professionals able to offer that 
Then we do our essential trips. Um, and then we also like to do the virtual is a good addition to our uh, in-person or our central trips you found because it lets you know to be prepared or what you need before you go. So to be prepared that you're gonna have to go to the ticket vending machine um, to purchase your ticket or you need to download the NJ Transit app. So we just like to, it gives us the opportunity to prepare um, our consumers before uh, taking a trip and figuring out ways that you might need to advocate for yourself as, as needed, figuring out what the fare is and how to calculate the fare. Uh, so we're really into uh, making sure that you learn how to use um, public transportation uh, independently as well as safely. Uh, so NJ Tip at Rutgers, we always uh, welcome referrals um, from different community partners and colleagues. Uh, program graduates, uh, NJ Tip graduates can uh, refer people. NJ Transit, other providers, uh, funders, DVRS staff. If you're not on any of those lists, then just you. So if you're on the list of you, then we um, uh, accept external uh, referrals from you as well. Um, and we're able to provide the training either virtually or um, in the field. Um, and we also included in the handouts, there is some information um, about some, most of the stuff that we mentioned today. Uh, so at the top is stuff about NJ Transit. So it's about the organization, some of the functionality that we've mentioned, and then just the different platforms so that you could be aware of it. Um, so we have that in the handout, if that's something, uh, hopefully you download that and you find that helpful, uh, those handouts. Also in the handouts, we've uh, included the NJ Transit Reduced Fare application that we mentioned earlier. Um, our slides are also available um, in the handouts as well as our referral form uh, so that you can uh, refer yourself or people that you know that can maybe uh, benefit um, from travel training. Uh, so we're available for all that. Um, and we just uh, want to thank uh, the ARC of New Jersey uh, for having these Healthy at Home uh, webinars. They, we, we've uh, enjoyed uh, part, being an attendee as well as now being um, a participant or a panelist in it. Um, and we hope that everyone is staying um, safe and healthy. And um, Louis, did you want to add anything else? Yeah, I just really appreciate the ARC of New Jersey and our, our partnership over all these years. I, I think I did a, a webinar for you back in uh, 2014, um, and I, I look forward to this one living on afterwards and doing more in the future. Thank you. Great. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Melody and Lewis, for being here and presenting and sharing all this wonderful information. Um, I want to just make sure if anybody has any last minute questions or comments, you can share those in the questions box on your GoToWebinar control panel now. So um, Melody and Lewis have their contact information posted on the screen right now. You can visit njtip.ruckers.edu for resources and information on njtip. Um, I do not see any follow-up questions. So again, thank you all for being here. And we hope that you will join us for the next Stay Healthy at Home webinar next Tuesday. Thanks so much and take care.